In the next few examples, we're going to look at how we graph exponential functions. Uh, now remember, exponential functions are equations that have uh, a power of x in them. Okay, so somewhere there's something raised to the power of x. There's an x in an exponent, hence the word exponential. Uh, and for all of these, it's good to think about how these um, expressions relate or how, how the modified graph relates to the, the basic exponential. So the basic exponential uh, that looks like this has a few properties. Okay, It has an asymptote at uh, y equals 0, that is the x-axis. It will have a, a y-intercept at x, not x, at 1. Okay, It will not have any x-intercepts and it will, uh, if you look at this, this term here, this tells you the rate of increase. So a rate of increase of 2. Okay. Now, we're not graphing that one, but that's just there as a reference. We're graphing this guy. y equals 10 lots of 2 to the x. And the biggest thing with any kind of graphing question is to identify these properties. If we know these things, where the asymptote is, where the intercepts are, what the rate of increase is, we can get a pretty accurate sketch built up. Okay, So let's have a think. This coefficient of 10, how has that affected the original graph? Well, it's not going to change the asymptote. The only thing that changes an asymptote is a constant term being added on here. So my asymptote is the same. What about the y-intercept? Well, this 10, what it essentially does is it makes each value on the curve 10 times bigger. So it's actually going to impact the y-intercept by making it 10 times as big. So it was 1. This 10, which I've underlined in red, is going to multiply that by 10. So I'm actually going to have a y-intercept at 10. Uh, there's still going to be no x-intercepts. The rate of increase is still going to be the same because this term here determines the rate of increase. Okay, so if we want to sketch that, this is how we would go about doing it. I'm going to do the best I can on a tablet. Uh, we have, oh, it's a little poorly calibrated, but that'll do. We have an x axis. Uh, I might actually create a little bit extra space for myself here. So, um, I'm going to have to do a y-axis. I'm going to have an asymptote of y equals 0, and I need to make sure I've got space for a y-intercept of 10. Now, you could be tempted to, um, to keep the x and the y-axis in the same scale, um, but that's going to mean you're going to be way up here for your, for your y-intercept, whereas you're better off just doing something that looks sensible and then rescaling your axes appropriately. So. Uh, in this particular case, oh, let's go about there. Oh, worst axis ever. Yeah, calibration's way up, but that'll do. So let's make this place our y-intercept. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to label it as 10. And we know that our rate of increase is Two. In other words, this graph has to double for each unit I move to the right. So if it's here on the y-axis, when I move one unit to the right, it has to go up to there, which will be 20. 
when I go another unit, it's got to go up, oh, way up to off my axes. That's all right, but it gives me a guide of where to go with my graph. Similarly, when I go to the left, it's got to halve. So it's got to be down to five at this spot. It's got to be down to two at this spot, uh, two and a half at that spot, and so on. And I can use my grid squares. And that'll be enough to be able to, to sketch this thing pretty accurately. Now, when I join those things up, um, you can't see me doing this, but I'm actually turning the tablet upside down so that I can put my hand, my hands over here, okay? So that it's on the inside of the curve, and that can help you to get a nice, smooth curve. And it just makes it a little bit easier to draw. Again, on a tablet, it's quite difficult to draw this neatly. I suggest you use pencil very lightly Okay, I've gone up to the top of where my axes finish. Put these arrows on to suggest that it goes on forever. Uh, I need to mark on just a few things um, to, to tidy up before I finish. I'm going to mark on my asymptote. Now, my asymptote is the x-axis. It's hard to see that. So often what we do is we just do a little dotted line, and you make it just a smidge above the x-axis. Okay, just to say, yeah, it is on the x-axis, but you couldn't see it if I actually did it on it, so I'm just doing it above to say that's where my asymptote is. We traditionally mark that with a dotted line, and it'd be good to show some scale on your x-axis as well. Like this. Just so we can see, oh, okay, they've done it to scale. Uh, now, the the level of accuracy that you need to show as far as um, sketches go will vary depending on what's specified in the question. In the test we will tell you what details to add in to your sketch. Okay, so sometimes you have to show intercepts, sometimes, well actually with the exponential you should always show the at least the y-intercept. You may or may not have to show the x-intercept if it exists. You should, as, a, as general good practice, show the, um, the asymptotes as well. So that is a perfectly acceptable, uh, very neat sketch of this particular exponential function, y equals 10 times 2 to the x.